Do you want to cool down your hot yard outdoors so that it's adapted to increasing heat waves? Also, do you want to make your outdoor spaces more natural, whether you are in an early childhood center, school, ush, or home? Hi, I'm Jan from Sustainable Butterflies, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you what you can do to cool down your hot yard outdoors and make it more natural. Over the past 10 years, I have done hundreds of sustainability audits, helping early childhood centers, schools, and ush across Australia. Did you know that 18 out of 19 hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2000, according to NASA? And as a result of this heating, heat waves are getting hotter, longer, more frequent and more intense. Which means that outdoor spaces and yards everywhere, right, including in early childhood centers and schools, are also getting hotter. Some centers and schools have yards that look like this. Look at it. There is no astroturf, no concrete, uh, no artificial shade, right? There is plenty of greenery and plenty of natural shade. There are also no straight lines and no right angles here, right? It's full of nooks and crannies and uh, inspiring, invigorating challenges for the children and healthy healthy risk and uh, encouragement and stimulation and all that. Now, maybe you are one of those lucky centers and schools whose yards look like this. And if that's you, high five, fantastic. But in my experience, eight out of 10 center and school yards look like those you see on the photos I took in the centers. They are full of concrete, astroturf, straight lines, right? And materials in general, they're designed in a way that they attract, trap and radiate heat. Let me give you a quick example of what I mean. Last summer, in December, I did a sustainability audit for a client, an early childhood center in Western Sydney. The center manager wanted to cool down her yard and make it more natural, right? Uh, she got some grant, I think it was junior land care, I can't remember. No, the, the point is, she didn't have a lot of money, right, to do this, but she needed, needed to do something. And here is the irony. We were standing underneath the, uh, the shade sail in the very yard you see on the photos and despite her being compliant, having adequate shade, regulation 114, it was so hot and dry. She looked at me saying, Jan, I need to do something here. It gets so hot and so dry. And look at the yard. There's no wonder it gets so hot and, and dry. It's like an oven. There is no gap, color bond fans. There are artificial surfaces, concrete and astroturf. There's no natural greenery. It's, it's like an oven. It's uh, just right angles and straight lines. Now, what does it mean for the children in centers like these? Where are they going to play? What are they going to do? Are they going to be on an astroturf that gets up to 100 degrees in summer? Are they going to be on their devices in air-conditioned rooms? Hotter, more frequent and more intense heat waves are not only linked to bushfires and droughts. They are also linked to breathing problems, hypothermia and heart disease. And when it comes to health, children in particular are at risk. A 2022 study in the US found that during heat waves, children's visits to the emergency department increased by 12%. If your yard is looking like this on the photos, right, what can you do in your center, school or ush, if you don't have millions on expensive renovations, such as excavating concrete? Does it mean that you will do nothing? And what will happen if you don't cool down your yard? Children will be exposed even more to increasing heat because based on current trends, it's only going to get hotter. Luckily for you, there is a new solution for early childhood centers and schools. Let me introduce you to the Heatwave Adapter and Yard Naturalizer, a hands-on, low-budget, practical and actionable mini course with 20 practical tips on how to cool down your hot yard and make it more natural. The first part of the course has 10 tips on heatwave adaptation and the second part of the course has 10 tips on yard naturalization. So 20 tips on what and they complement one another. The tips range from things very simple and very affordable on, a, on the easy end of the spectrum, right? So you'll find things like installing a bird bath or making an insect hotel with the children or planting uh, climbers, right, on the structures, right? So that's on the easy end of the spectrum. And on the more complex end of the spectrum, also more expensive end of the spectrum, you have things like installing a turtle mount, right? Or breaking your spaces into more differentiated and more curvy instead of those flat and linear spaces, right? But most of the tips are kind of in the middle. Not too easy and not too cheap and not too crazy complicated and complex and not too expensive. The point here, really, of these 20 tips is to give you a range of options, right? It's kind of like a menu in a restaurant, right? You can have it all or you can just have starter or the, the main meal or the dessert, right? Because everyone has different circumstances, different license places, different budget, whether you're a big company or small company, whether you can make decisions or can't make decisions, whether you need landlord's approval, etc., etc., right? So the point is to give you a range of options so you can choose based on your individual circumstance. Very important thing 
okay? This is not a generic sustainability training. No, no, no. It is specific to the education sector, right? Because, especially around compliance, because you will notice that things like drowning hazard or water sanitation, anaphylaxis, uh, scalable objects or risk assessment or poisonous plants, all of that is integrated into the course. The course consists of video lectures, pre-recorded, where I walk you through all of these 20 tips, right, to give you context, and you also get a PDF blueprint with photos and examples listing all of these 20 tips, right? So you have something in your hand. So if you want to cool down and naturalize your hot yard outdoors with my mini course, including this blueprint, here is what you need to do. There are two steps. The step number one is to click the orange button you see underneath this video and, and register on LearnDesk. LearnDesk is an online learning platform, right? Where my course is hosted. You will get your unique login. And the step number two is to pay the course price of $97 and start learning today. But that's not everything. With my mini course, you are also getting two free bonuses at no extra charge. The first bonus is my greenery guidebook for little hands and beyond, because the, some of these tips involve greenery, right? Anywhere from ground covers all the way to trees and anywhere in between, such as climbers and shrubs and gap fillers and edging plants and spillovers, etc., etc. And it'll help you because it lists plants that are non-poisonous, hardy and native. So that's the first bonus. The second bonus is my 10 compliance and sustainability touch points. Uh, all, both bonuses are PDFs, by the way. So these 10 touch points, compliance and sustainability, right? They will help you bridge the gap between compliance and sustainability. And as I mentioned before, in this sector, education sector, com things have to be first compliant and then sustainable. And this will help you bridging that gap. So I'll see you there.